name is Grace Williams. I am a course director at Underwater Vision in Utila, Honduras. And today I'm going to talk about and give a demo on how to give a knowledge development teaching presentation either for the IDC or for your staff instructor course. I'll be following this lesson plan form and I've attached a copy of this lesson plan form in the description below the video. So we're going to go on ahead and get started. Today we'll be talking about Knowledge V3, question 4 of the Patty Open Water Diver course. Right? So I like how everyone did their homework, it just looks like some of us missed this question. Before we get started, I have a question for you. So, Sarah, do you like sniffing flowers? I love it. You love smelling flowers? Alright, so how do you go about smelling flowers? Well, I get close enough to the flower without touching it to smell it and just smell it from there. So why wouldn't you want to stick your nose in the flowers? Because I don't want to hurt the flowers or potentially get stung myself by a bee that's hiding in them. Exactly, all right. So smelling flowers is very similar to staying off the bottom while diving. During this presentation, this question is addressing why we want to have environmentally sound diving techniques. If I go too fast, please slow me down, ask questions as they come up, and take notes. All right? This is important because tomorrow we're going out on open water dive one and two, and we'll be going to Little Bite for the first dive. Little Bite is an awesome dive site, and it has a lot of sand, so it's really good for an entry level dive site, but we still want to avoid stirring up any of the sand and reducing the visibility during the dive. So the question that was missed is, my buddy and I remain neutrally buoyant and stay above the bottom enough to avoid contact. We do this because bottom contact. So we're going to bring up this information button right here. And when we bring up the information button, we see that staying neutrally buoyant and being aware of body position helps by avoiding hurting fragile aquatic creatures. Right? So what are some creatures that maybe we don't want to disturb during our dive? Maybe a peacock flounder or a cute sea goddess. Exactly. So those are some of the things that we don't want to injure or hurt during our dive. We also want to maintain better visibility by not stirring up the bottom. We wouldn't be able to see that flounder or that sea goddess if we stir up the visibility during the dive. So we want to make sure we're staying above the bottom and not doing that. And we also want to make sure we're lowering our risk of accidentally bumping into something sharp or something that can stand. So above the sand, there's not necessarily a lot of things that we can get hurt by. But we also want to practice this when we're swimming above corals as well because we don't want to hurt or damage the corals in any way. So now we're going to take a look at the video. Regardless of type, Avoid bottom contact as much as possible so you don't stir it up and reduce the visibility to help avoid cuts and stings and so you don't damage aquatic life. Stay neutrally buoyant with your gear streamlined well above the bottom. If you must contact the bottom, choose a place without sensitive aquatic life and hazards and settle onto it gently, ideally with little more than fin tip contact. When you're close to the bottom, Watch where you put your hands and feet. All right, so now that we've seen the video, remember guys, this is very important because tomorrow we're going out on open water dive one and two, and one of the dive sites we're going to is a little bite. Since there is that sand, we want to make sure we're not stirring up visibility or hurting any of the fragile aquatic life. One of the courses that I would really suggest that you do after this course is the Padding Peak Performance Buoyancy course. Now, the Peak Performance Buoyancy course is great for someone at, or a student at any level, simply because you can never have perfect buoyancy. There's always things you can do to improve your buoyancy. So if you open up the Paddy app, right, so the app is something I had you all download at the start of this course, you're going to go to a section called Training in the bottom right corner. And when you click on the Training button, it's going to bring up a list of all of the Paddy courses that exist. Okay. So if you're looking at that list, you're going to click on Peak Performance Buoyancy and it'll tell you things like who can take the course, what are the required pieces of equipment for the course, and what you will learn. Again, this is an excellent course because it'll teach you how to remain mutually buoyant throughout the whole dive and you'll just be in much better control of your buoyancy. Now, a piece of equipment that I highly recommend that you get is your own BCD. If you have your own BCD, you'll become much more comfortable with the functions and features of the BCD. So here you've got your inflate button, your deflate button, and then all the different aspects of the BCD. You'll become more comfortable by using the same type of BCD over and over again. That's why I highly suggest that you get your own. The question that we missed is my buddy and I remain neutrally buoyant and stay above the bottom enough to avoid contact. We do this because bottom contact, right? Sarah, which one do you think the answer is? I think it's all three of them. You think it's all three of them? So we'll click here on the screen and see. 
and you are correct, it is all free. So we don't want to injure or put, kill fragile aquatic life. We don't want to disrupt the bottom. And we also want to avoid the risk of accidental cuts, scrapes, and stings. So again, guys, this is important when we go out on our dives tomorrow during the open water course, but it's also important for every single dive you're ever going to do as a scuba diver. If you guys have any questions about taking the Peak Performance Buoyancy course, or if you're interested in buying your own BCD, please come talk to me after class. Does anybody have any questions? No.